39 feet or 12 meters tall, 1,122 feet or 342 meters of track, 32 miles per hour or 51 kilometers per hour top speed. Those are the stats of a family coaster. But what if I told you this ride I was describing was arguably one of the most intense coasters in the world? Which ride am I talking about? Tornado at Bakken. Find out why the spinning coaster can be one of the wildest rides out there. Spinning coasters made a resurgence in the 2000s. Most were built by Reverschon, Zamperla, Gerslauer, or Maurisone, and almost all of them are firmly family coasters. Then Bakken received a spinning coaster from Intamin in 2009 named Tornado, and from the start, it was clear this would be a different experience. During the ride's construction, enthusiasts pondered why such a small coaster had a dual chain lift. Was it for anti-rollbacks or was something else going on? Why would such a small coaster have such a seemingly complex lift system? The reason became clear upon opening. This was no ordinary chain lift. This was a hydraulic lift that was essentially a launch, accelerating the trains to 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour. And this is a surprise for many riders because most of the rides are enclosed in a building. There are two turns that pop above the midway, showing the bright orange track but most of the twisted layout and lift hill is shrouded from view. The building itself has a pretty mundane paint scheme, but I love the giant 3D twister placed on the building and the giant signage for the attraction looks great. Like many spinning coasters, Tornado has just four person cars. Typically the park has four on the course at once, but because of a relatively short cycle timing at continuously moving load platform, the ride usually has a short wait. The longest line I've seen for a tornado has been 10 to 15 minutes, and that was on a summer weekend. The queue was set up to have a single rider line, but I've never seen it in use, presumably because the main queue is usually so short. Like the Gerslauer spinners, riders face each other inwards. I prefer the outer facing seats for the visuals, but it is fun to see the shock and reaction of others during this ride's intense bits. Unlike the other spinners out there, tornado has over the shoulder restraints, with shoulder straps. It's the same restraint system found on rides like Intimidator 305 or Maverick. And I have to say, this is one of the few rides I'm thankful for having over the shoulder restraints. They are 100% necessary for the start of this coaster, otherwise you'd probably smack heads with the rider next to you. Now there are two ways to experience Tornado, the regular way and boost mode. If you're a hardcore thrill seeker, you want boost mode. Boost mode throws you up the lift hill faster, and the operators disable the mid-course trims, which allows the car to navigate the course roughly 20% faster. And the operators will also spin the cars out of the station, which results in the fastest and wildest rotation on any spinning coaster I've ever experienced. I could not believe how fast I was spinning. To experience boost mode, you need to ask the operators nicely, and have low crowds. The ride basically needs to be a walk-on for your request to be granted. This is for a few reasons. First, the operators will not pair parties together for this mode because of how intense it is. Second, the operators need to stop the continuous load platform and switch the ride's operating mode. Third, the operators need to manually spin the car out of the station. Fortunately, crowds at Bakken are usually low enough that this can be accommodated most days out of peak times. I'll first start by describing the normal ride experience. You slowly turn out of the station, not yet spinning, and engage the chain lift. For a fleeting second, it tricks you into thinking it'll be your garden variety slow lift hill. But after you engage, you suddenly start accelerating upwards in the dark. The vehicle will start to rotate as well. You were then viciously thrown over the drop. Imagine being launched in the first drop of one of the Six Flags Pandemonium clones, that's basically what the first drop in Tornado is. Because of how sharp this drop is, you are abruptly chucked upwards and sideways. You get crazy laterals and a strong ejector pop simultaneously. It is vicious. Your neck will inevitably snap against the shoulder straps from the violent motion. It doesn't bother me too much because the straps are soft, but this moment is too much for some. Tornado then meanders through a series of helixes some indoors and some outdoors. The change in lighting and location does mess with your sense of direction, especially because you are spinning a modest amount, but the ride isn't too intense minus the first drop. 
the helixes don't pile on the positive Gs, and like I said, the spinning isn't too crazy. It's about on par with a Gerslauer spinner. The ride does pick up towards the end though. There's a snappy S transition that offers some nice laterals. Then the coaster is a nice finale. This will almost always get the vehicle spinning quickly as you navigate a super compact helix and then an S bend. You then hop into the final brakes, getting a quick spurt of airtime. This coaster is pretty brief as you have only roughly 30 seconds of prime ride time, but it at least starts and ends with a bang. I think the pacing suffers towards the middle of the coaster. Those helixes are fine for a straight up family coaster, but it's just so weird having an ultra intense start like that and then backing off the thrills so severely. Now what about boost mode? As you exit the station, the operators will start spinning your vehicle. So when you reach the launched lift hill, you're spinning at a more steady rate already. And when you're propelled into the main layout, you will be spinning crazy fast. I couldn't believe the difference. The launch didn't feel any faster to me, and the initial drop was equally as intense before. But immediately after, it is apparent the ride is running much wilder. There's a transition early in the ride that pops you out of your seat this time, and you spin so quickly that you are subjected to sustained centripetal forces start to finish. Picture those high speed spins on a tilt a whirl that plaster you to the back of your seat, except place that on a coaster. That's basically what you have with Tornado. It felt completely out of control. This mode is only for spinning fans. You end up hitting the brake run roughly 4 seconds faster in boost mode. Now that doesn't sound like much, but remember, this is a pretty short coaster to begin with, so 4 seconds is a big difference. The final thing I want to touch on is this ride's smoothness. Most of the ride tracks well. The middle is smooth, but the finale does have a bit of a rattle to it. Then the first drop, while it tracks smoothly, is such a jarring transition that can cause discomfort. So what would I rate Tornado? Well, it depends which mode it's on. Regular mode gets a 6 out of 10. I love the crazy launched lift hill and first drop. Intamin was mad for designing this. The ride does let its foot off the gas for the rest of the ride though. It's a weird contrast having one of the most intense elements on any coaster, followed by a series of helixes tamer than most family spinners, but that initial moment ultimately makes the coaster memorable for me. Boost mode gets an 8 out of 10. This is a night and day experience. Those pacing issues I mentioned disappear. The extra speed and spin make a world of a difference. You spin so quickly that any layout would be exciting. You get your equilibrium wrecked and likely will cackle with delight, assuming you like to spin a lot. I strongly recommend asking for this mode if you crave a one of a kind thrilling experience. Tornado is such a unique spinning coaster, and so few parks like Bakken would be willing to operate this ride like this in boost mode. As a coaster enthusiast, I really appreciate it. This is the best attraction at Bakken, and when experienced in boost mode, it is one of the best spinning coasters in the world. I'll still easily take the mock extreme spinners over Tornado because of the more varied elements, but Tornado in boost mode is better than almost every other spinning coaster out there, and it is undoubtedly the most dizzying. Outside of boost mode, I'd probably place this ride near the Pandemonium clones at the Six Flags parks. That mode change makes that big of an impact. So those are my thoughts on Tornado at Bakken, one of the most shocking experiences in the world. What are your thoughts on this coaster? Have you experienced boost mode? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.